Hi everybody, Monica's back here with the mini series on You're Not Condemned, You're Single. So one of the things I feel like I needed while I was single and I never really got to have the conversation the way that I would have liked to was there's a point to it. You know, we know the point to, um, we know the purpose behind dating. We know the purpose behind getting married. We know the purpose behind getting engaged. All those different things but I felt like okay I'm single I'm not dating definitely not engaged I'm not married what am I supposed to be doing and is there more to that than I'm supposed to just be sitting and waiting to get married one day or to find someone one day even if we're not talking about me or just find someone I really believed that I was missing out on life's most exciting and valuable seasons of life, you know, um, and I didn't realize how crucial my season was till, um, till way after I needed to know that information. So I just wanted to share with you that the lessons that you learn each day are not lessons that are just for you or just for right now. You have incredible purpose and incredible gifts within you that the world needs. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been born with them or you wouldn't have developed them over time. So the purpose, your purpose, wherever you are in life, is to use those gifts, tap into those gifts, be an excellent friend, be a, um, be an excellent example, be an excellent sister, daughter, granddaughter, when's the last time you called your aunt, checked on her, be excellent in all that you do, carry that spirit of excellence around with you. One thing that I think of often is, I realize that one flaw that I had in thinking that the single season was a season of waiting was that it wasn't a season of working on myself, on my heart, on things that I need to, to do. I think in the uh, beginning, I really did kind of tap my foot and just say, well, you know, where is he? Because I'm here. I'm ready. I'm cute. I am. I'm ready. Where is he? Yeah, I'm just waiting on him. And eventually I realized, well, actually, there's lazy waiting and then there's active waiting. There's active waiting where you say, all right, I'm gonna meet somebody one day, but until then, I've got a lot of work to do. And I'm gonna stay focused on that. And there's lazy waiting saying, oh, well, I'm just gonna assume that all the experience that I've had, all the conversations that I've had, all the books I've read are gonna prepare me and I don't need to continually just grow as an individual so it's just really awesome um, one thing I wanted to share was that I love this thought that I read in a book recently the book is called love and respect by dr. Emerson Egrich and I'll share it here but one thing he says is as a wife one way to show honor to our spouse one way to respect our husband and the leadership role that they have in our household is to defer to them. And basically he was saying, if you're in a conflict, don't know what to do, maybe you disagree, just defer to him. And when I read that, I was like, mm, but what if he's wrong? Like, what if, I just had a whole long list of why I'm not gonna be deferring, nothing. And I tried it. It was so beautiful. I deferred. And the book's called Love and Respect. So by deferring to him and saying, you know what, if we can't agree or whatever the case is, I'm just going to go with the flow here. And an amazing thing happened. I said, whatever you want to do, I'm fine with it. He looked at me and said, well, it's good to have someone behind you doubting your every move and we laughed about that because it was a funny way of saying it's good to have someone to play devil's advocate 
and that role is just as valid. We're able to have a conversation around what we're going to do. But I believe that that was only able to, to happen because I bestowed upon him the honor and the respect, saying, hey, you know what? You lived life before you met me and you survived this long, so if you want to make a decision that I disagree with or you know, maybe that we uh, can't come to common ground on, I'm just going to trust you because, I mean, you're a trustworthy person. And in that, I feel like his heart was softened. And we were, he was able to say, okay, wait, no, she's my help me, like she's here to help me. And I should tap into that. I shouldn't go through life um, using my own advice or using my own um, experience to guide my steps. Like I have a partner here and it was really, really awesome. Now, the opposite version of that conversation would have been if he wanted to do X and I said, oh no, I don't think so, neck rolling and finger pointing and you're wrong and you do this all the time and da 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 da. And uh, isn't that a pretty common reaction, right? For, for women who feel like their perspective isn't being taken seriously or they're not being celebrated, they're not being honored, they're not being loved, you know? But the book I was reading, it talks about um, how when we choose respect, regardless of our emotions, when we choose to respect our spouse, um, it's like they're more inclined to love. And then them loving us inclines us all the more to respect them more. And then us respecting them inclines them all the more to continue loving us more. It's just this amazing, energizing cycle that pours energy and life and love and excitement and pursuit and goodness into your relationship. I say all that to say that um, how are you at deferring in your single life? Whether that's deferring to God, saying, God, I don't know what to do here, so I'm just going to trust you. Isaiah 54 says, you're my spouse, and you're my bridegroom forever and ever, so I'm just going to trust you. How often do we say that and just find rest in knowing that he's faithful? Or, you know, if you don't have faith in God, how often do we just say, if we're working with someone on a project, you know what, I don't think it's wise, but... I'm just going to humble myself here. I'm just going to humble myself here. Learning humility is a lifelong skill. And that's an example of something that we can be practicing while we're single so that by the time we're married, we're not scrambling trying to piece these things together. Like, man, I thought I was patient, but if he drops his socks one more time, you know, we were just getting really upset and just... Marriage is not easy. Relationships are not easy. You know, if you've been in them, they're just not. So the best gift that you can give both yourself and the person that's coming along in the future is to actively wait, actively develop, and make this something that will be a lifelong thing. Because you're not going to actively develop while you're single and then stop once you're dating or married, right? The goal is to be actively developing and growing and maturing and learning and stretching your capacity to be able to include more and more throughout the rest of your life, no matter what. I hope this encourages you.